All right, welcome back. Uh, we're in that segment where we talk about the World Cup. Uh, it's gradually, gradually, um, the days are winding down uh, gradually, and um, it's, it's just it's upon us. Yeah, it's very close now. How many days to go now? It's just very close. The very night is June 14. What's today's date? Eighth, right? Okay. 38 days, 30 to, days go. to go. So it's so close right now, and it's just like practically seeing it that is right here. And somehow, just feeling the vibes, knowing that it's 38 days to the FIFA World Cup in Russia. And uh, Aloy Agu has been talking, yeah. you know, about uh, Team Nigeria, what he feels they can do, the performance, and how best they can actually get the best out of this particular yeah. World Cup. Knowing that the searchlight is on Nigeria, mm -hmm. in the sense that the first thing to qualify from Africa, followed by Egypt, so all eyes will be obviously yeah. on Nigeria. I mean, and he knows what he's saying. He's an integral part mm -hmm. of the Super Eagles, uh, the current uh, Super Eagles uh, setup. Uh, he's been to the World Cup uh, as well. You know, didn't see action in '94. He's been to the World Cup. I have fond memories of Aloy Aguita at uh, Algiers '90 and Senegal '92. Uh, was uh, that was his reign as um, Super Eagles goalkeeper, and he functions as the capacity of a goalkeeper trainer. And uh, uh, we'll be hoping that. Gennard Draw receives the best advice from people like Aloy Ago, especially now that some people are saying we have a goalkeeping situation. So uh, we'll see what happens uh, with uh, that one. Well, let, let's listen to the man, uh, what he has to say. Aloy Ago, uh, former uh, Super Eagles goalkeeper, current Super Eagles goalkeeper trainer. I think we still don't have to relax. You have to pick it up from where you have stopped and continue to prepare. It's another thing to qualify for World Cup is another thing to go in there and do well. So we want to go in there and do well. So we don't lay back. Rather, we continue to work hard, we continue to pray, we continue to prepare very well, and then eventually we will go in there and get good result and good performance. That's what we're praying for, that's what we're working for. Well, all those countries there are footballing nation. Nigeria also is a footballing nation. And uh, my expectation, which is also the expectation of, from my own, I think it's also expectation of Nigeria, is that we will skate through that group and we will go further in this workout. That is my expectation. And I know by the special grace of God, we will come out of that group and we will go beyond what Nigeria has ever done before. That's huge. That's huge. Laying it on the line. Yeah. He hopes that we get out of that group. Um, you know, mentioning some of the names in that group can send Jitas down your spine sometimes. Croatia. Argentina, <laughs> Croatia. <laughs> Maybe the third one, not as formidable as the first two. Mm -hmm. But we, if we're yeah. going to get to the second round, we have to get it ahead of one of the two of those teams. And that's, that's a tough task. It's a tough task. I'm really happy that Argentina is going to be the last game we'll play. Maybe we'll have qualified Croatia before then. Iceland and them. Maybe exactly Maybe. we would have qualified before then. But when you think of the quid that you're going to get at the end of the day, the winner is going to get $38 million, right? And when you keep thinking about the money and what it's going to do, sometimes you just want to put in that extra effort. Extra, yeah. A little extra. We yeah. just take you there. First thing first. Go past the group stage. According to yourself, you will say once that, that is out. Once that barrier fearless, is out of the yes, way. And the yeah. fearlessness comes in, that confidence comes in. Sometimes, even the world champions, let them come and call the finals, can just take them to the cleaners. Who right? knows? Who knows? <laughs> That's going to be in that one. But why Nigeria, we are just expecting and hoping that we have a spectacular performance. Where the host talking about Russia, it's all about forensic, all kinds of things are going on, especially at St. Petersburg, that will be hosting, you know, one of the game as one of the one of the venues for uh, yeah. the matches. And if you check what these guys are doing, I mean, uh, they're now getting used to, you know, the FIFA World Cup is actually coming. Mm -hmm. I mean, so St. Petersburg, we know that it's more like a home to uh, Zenith. That's yeah. one of the, the big the, the, teams the, in the, the Russian league. 67,000 capacity. Wow. Arena. Wow. Massive. Okay, massive. You know, and. So, the, the, you know, the football frenzy, mm -hmm. activities heightened, uh, you know, a lot of excitement in the air. Uh, these guys, it, the dream is about to come true. They're seeing it. Uh, mm -hmm. There's going to be influx of tourists. I mean, a lot of things. And like I said the other time, mm -hmm. uh, what 
every World Cup tries to do, every host of the World Cup tries to stage a World Cup that was better than yeah. the previous one. And if 2018 can be better than 2014, uh, then we have something huge uh, yeah. on our hands. And all the negative spots mm -hmm. that you might think about the Russians, mm -hmm. they're doing a lot to erase it, mm -hmm. especially during this World Cup. Yeah, we know that especially this stadium that will be hosting seven World Cup matches, including a semi-finals. Let's get reaction from there. We'll end the segment here. Okay, compared to the to the biggest stadium out there, I, know. I, I played also in Alans Arena in, uh, in in Madrid. So this stadium is for sure uh, for me top five in the world. No, uh, we have a very very good stadium. So it's every game is very nice to to play here in front of our fans. Uh, for every game we have like four, around forty thousand uh, fans at our game, and it's it's a big big motivation for us.